Boeing Starliner spacecraft, and two NASA astronauts are about to be stuck indefinitely on the ISS. This is what NASA declared after the meeting on Friday, June 21st, following its optimistic announcements during Tuesday's teleconference. Is everything getting worse? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Waiting for a Starliner landing date is the new waiting for a Starliner launch date. Quote of the day. I unintentionally saw this interesting quote while browsing X. And this makes sense. Late Friday evening, NASA announced the date of the Starliner spacecraft's return has been slipped from June 26th to an unspecified time in July. According to the agency, this adjustment deconflicts from a series of spacewalks while allowing mission teams time to review propulsion system data and assess any additional testing opportunities. Mission managers are evaluating future return opportunities following the station's two planned spacewalks on June 24th and July 2nd. Without the spacewalk, sources said NASA considered June 30th as a possible next return window. But with that spacewalk, it's likely no earlier than Independence Day or July 4th. Yeah, my crystal ball worked. In the video, ISS in big trouble due to cursed Boeing, Starliner, NASA give up. I speculated that the abnormal cancellation of June 13th's spacewalk outside ISS is due to Starliner. Given that NASA wanted to delay Starliner's come home further, so they sought to push the spacewalk from June 13th to two backup dates, including Monday, June 24th, followed by another on Tuesday, July 2nd. And now they can blame conflicts with a series of spacewalks as one of the reasons why the June 26th return trip was canceled. Sounds reasonable, right? And I bet that in July they will continue to find a new reason to delay. So in the framework of this video, I can consider it as an indefinite delay. So, how about you? Do you think that Starliner and its astronauts would be stuck on ISS indefinitely? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now let's come back. In NASA's update, Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program said, we are taking our time and following our standard mission management team process. We are letting the data drive our decision making relative to managing the small helium system leaks and thruster performance we observed during rendezvous and docking. He added, it seems like there are always paradoxical in the declarements and actions of NASA officials regarding vital matters on Starliner. Like David Calhoun, senior NASA employees seem to have forgotten to add the word transparency to their vocabulary. Remember what they said in Tuesday's teleconference. They continuously emphasized that helium leaks were small and reduced, and the thrusters looked normal. Thus, they targeted a return date to Earth for June 26. But in the wake of a series of meetings on Thursday and Friday, they had a plot twist saying that one of the reasons for adjusting June 26th is to allow mission teams time to review propulsion system data. Additionally, before launch, Steve Stitch confidently spoke out that the engineers can tolerate about 100 times what's currently leaking. As a result, Starliner had a nightmare journey to ISS with five separate leaks and the failure of five of the vehicle's 28 reaction control system thrusters. These glitches themselves created a new set of messes, like we see now. Furthermore, in contrast to the optimism that the agency had previously during the latest meetings, they were not able to feel relaxed with all the risks that Wilmore and Williams might encounter during a return flight to Earth. In addition to the two major issues mentioned, Starliner still has a lot to prove. Its return journey will see it heat up considerably during re-entry, only to slow its descent over the New Mexico desert with a parachute system that Boeing was forced to re-engineer due to safety concerns last year. Not to mention heat shield, spacesuit, door plug, and so forth. Fix me if I'm wrong, I feel like everything is getting worse. I can't forget how falteringly Boeing CEO David Calhoun responded to Senator Josh Hawley's tough questions about safety concerns at Boeing. I was also shocked when I learned that in Boeing's facility, one door seal of the airplane was lubricated with Dawn liquid dish soap and cleaned with a wet cheesecloth, and another was being checked with a hotel room keycard. Therefore, I wish the FAA could go and tour Starliner's facility to see what the hell are they doing with this disaster spacecraft. 
It has been held on station for over half of a month and just has 29 remaining days prior to running out of energy. In the most embarrassing scenario, two NASA astronauts could jump into SpaceX Dragon to come home. If that happens, Crew 8 Dragon docked at the station has to fit two extra people on the way down, or Crew 9, which is planned for August, could be launched with two fewer crew members. While NASA was announcing a new setback for Starliner, the European Space Agency achieved a new milestone. Europe's Ariane 6 rocket has completed a fueling test and countdown rehearsal that is the final major milestone before its inaugural launch in July. The European Space Agency said on June 21 that the agency and its partners completed a wet dress rehearsal the previous day at the launch site in French Guiana. In the test, the rocket was loaded with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellants and went through a countdown that stopped just before engine ignition. The test was originally scheduled for June 18, but was delayed two days. ESA officials said at a June 19 briefing after a meeting of the ESA Council that the slip was not linked to any major problems and would not delay the vehicle's inaugural launch, announced earlier in the month for July 9. The preparations towards the inaugural flight are really, really progressing well, ESA Director General Josef Oschbacher said at that briefing. That included a closeout of remaining issues from a qualification review of the vehicle, completed June 14, and installation of the payloads and fairing on the rocket's upper stage the same day. The ESA statement about the completion of the wet dress rehearsal added that analysis of data from it would continue until June 26. ESA has also scheduled a series of media briefings on June 25 to discuss pre-launch preparations. Ariane 6 is critical to efforts by ESA to end a launcher crisis that has temporarily deprived Europe of independent access to space. Several factors caused the crisis, such as delays in the development of Ariane 6 that pushed its introduction to after the final launch of the Ariane 5 nearly a year ago, problems with the Vega C rocket that have sidelined the vehicle since a failure a year and a half ago, and loss of access to the Soyuz rocket after Russia's invasion of Ukraine more than two years ago. ESA announced in November 2023 an agreement for stabilized exploitation of the Ariane 6 and Vega C that included providing 340 million euros, 364 million dollars, a year of financial support for the Ariane 6. That agreement requires the companies developing Ariane 6 to reduce their costs by 11 percent. The November 2023 agreement also called for transferring the responsibility for Vega C launch services from Ariane Space to Avio, the prime contractor for the rocket. Avio executives said last month that discussions about that transfer were still in progress. Oshbacher said that ESA had been called in to mediate negotiations between the two companies in recent weeks on the agreement to hand over Vega C operations at the request of one of the companies. The conditions for the transfer of Vega C from Ariana Space to Avio are clear, he said. We have made enormous progress and are very close, I would say, to having closed the open items. He did not elaborate on the issues that required ESA's mediation. The ESA Council was scheduled to take up a resolution approving that transfer at the meeting that concluded June 19, but Ashbacher said the Council will instead hold a separate meeting by the end of the month to finalize the transfer. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.